In this video, we're going to continue learning about the Fetch API. We're going to uh, run this JSON button. So right here, I'm going to create a second event listener. This is going to be button 2. It's going to have an event listener. Also, it's going to be click. In this case, it's going to be load JSON. So we're going to load this employees.json. Let's close this. Copy this. And here on the bottom, I'm going to add load and print JSON. So we're going to call this function function load JSON. And first, if you remember, we need to add fetch. In this case, I'm going to make all the steps again because this is a new a new topic introduced into the course. So we're going to add fetch and you have to specify the URL right here, employees.json. So we're going to use dot then right after we fetch. We're going to use then. And this is going to be a function. This is going to contain a response. And remember, you can specify console log the response right here. So we're going to click here on JSON and you can see we have the response right here. Again, if you open the proto, you can see the methods that you can pass to this response. And uh, you can see that this is uh, employees JSON. So you can see we have a JSON function right here. The previous one, we returned the value as text because this was a text file. But in this case, this is going to be JSON. So we need to add return response.json like this. And then we're going to add then because we need to give a, sec a second then. If you console log, and I'm going to remove this, if you console log the response, you can see that we don't have any values. And you click here on JSON, you can see we have a response. So we need to uh, give a second dot then in this case. Then function, we need to pass some data. It's going to be the return. Now that we have this as a JSON, this is going to be added right here. So we can console log this data and see the response. So click here on JSON and now you can see we have an array with three different objects. If you remember in the example using Ajax, we need to use JSON.parse. In the case of the fetch API, this is going to be right here. This is going to return this as a JSON and it's going to convert the response into JavaScript objects. So right here we have access to this data and right here is where we are going to print this into the HTML. We're going to create a variable called HTML. We're going to use data dot for each because this is a, an array. So we're going to add for each. It's going to be a function. This is an array of employees. So we're going to pass this as employee. And then we're going to add HTML plus equals so we can concatenate the previous value and I'm going to add an li, close the li, uh, dollar sign, open the curly braces and we're going to access this employee. This is going to be the main object, but we need to access this name and the job. So we're going to dot name and we're going to copy this and this is going to be dot and a job. So finally, we need to insert this into the HTML. So right after the for each, right here, I'm going to insert into the HTML. So we're going to use again document, get element by ID, and we're going to pass the result. It's going to be inner HTML equals to the HTML that we generate from the for each. So save this, click here on JSON. And now you can see we have the different employees, the name and the job. You can add a separator here and click here on JSON. And you can see we have something like this. Click here on load data. And this is going to return the data from this file. So in my opinion, this code from the fetch API is going to look more cleaner than the old Ajax code. So finally, in the next video, we're going to see how we can consume a REST API using Fetch API, and this is going to be the tier button that we have here.